Good morning. Good morning. Hello, good evening, good afternoon. I hope to see you. Good night. Uh, shalom, aloha, howdy, konnichiwa. Morgan, what's up? Salam, makalem, hola. These are all greetings. And uh, keep them in mind because we're going to get back to those later. Uh, it's that time of year again. The song was just saying, peace on earth. Um, goodwill towards men. Unfortunately, now I'm going to bum you out. So every message I, I put a bummer in there for. Uh, we look around the world, you don't see a whole lot of peace happening. Uh, we see a lot of unrest, fighting, division, and hate. Um, not much peace around the masses. If you look at this, it all seems to come from, and you know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, well, maybe I am. It seems to trickle down from the government. It just kind of trips out, splatters all over the place to everybody, and everybody gets upset and messes with everybody else. The powers that be um, seem to want to divide people, and it's, it's working. A lot of people are falling for it. People are arguing about, you know, what the Democrats are doing and the Republicans are doing this, and with Russia, the government. China, Ukraine, um, the war on churches that China has. Uh, people are still divided over the whole COVID thing and its 72 variants, you know, the whole monkey pox and all that stuff. Um, governments are tagging on to the whole LGBTQ stuff, uh, and people are and people are just fighting about that left and right. And it's just more division and, and not peace. Um, and yeah, and then there's the whole abortion thing. Let me start on that. Um, People say government should have, shouldn't have a say in that, and I agree. But then they wouldn't have a say in it in 73, it would still be off the table. So that's a whole other, that's a whole other message I can spend days on on that. Um, but I know everybody's heard the expression, separation of church and state, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot of people think it's in the Constitution. It's actually a metaphor. Uh, Roger Williams, the guy who founded the little state, Rhode Island, um, believed that any government involved in the church would corrupt the church. Uh, and with as much corruption as there is in government, can't blame for saying that. But there are government officials <coughs> who want to take God out of things. They want it off money. They've taken it out of schools and government. Um, they've taken it out of buildings. They told us it would be fine during the pandemic for going to church in certain places. Uh, there are plenty of examples of this. Those are just a few. Uh, but it's again, it's trickling down from the government and spreading out. Every government wants economic power, political political control. All of this is all over the news and social media, which you can't avoid it. I mean, you, I don't watch the news. I just, I don't want, I watch my stuff on my computer, my stupid shows, but I don't watch the news. It's, uh, you don't know what to believe. You can research and find out things. It's all over social media, which is all over the place. Um, and it's, it's, like I said, it starts with the government and trickles down. But now the government they're finding is controlling a lot of the social media. Mm -hmm. Um, and you get all the people who are competing to be right, the people who are competing about who, who gets what rights, about who gets top social status, who is better to run the country, and people in other countries doing the same thing, and some are even fighting their governments, ruling over them who have all the power, and not really giving any peace. Um, like I said, I, I say this is coming from the governments. Like I said, it's trickling down. It's like an open faucet just dripping. It just works out and it splatters all over the place and it's running downhill and filling up the country full of unrest. Uh, the government seemed to be in the horse and buggy days, to steal a joke from Abbott and Costello, they're horsing around and just driving up the buggy. Uh, the problem is they keep saying they're going to fix things, people keep believing them. People keep looking to the government to create peace and fix all these things that are, everybody's all upset at. And, uh, it needs to start with us and trickle out. It doesn't need to start with the government. People are looking at the government instead of looking at Jesus. They need to look at the peacemaker himself. You know, he's the one that he is the Lord of the peace. The Lord of peace. He is our Prince of Peace. He is the peacemaker. We can't turn to government. So if history has shown us anything, governments can't make a peace party in a room with nobody in there. There'd be the unrest in there if the government got their way. So the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, our Savior. We turn towards him, and we can become peacemakers like he wanted, and spread peace all over the world. So it trickles out from trickles down from him through us, and out all over, instead of the unrest trickling out all over. Jesus said in, in, in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. He's clear. Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. He 
He is the Prince of Peace. He is the most peaceful person. I'm going to say person because he was a person. Mm -hmm. And he knows it. And he's given it to us free and clear. That doesn't mean he wants to keep it. He wants us to keep it for ourselves. He wants us to spread it out. He wants us to spread his peace and be peacemakers as well. Right? But how? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> he did say go out and spread the gospel. In Mark 16, 15, he said though that he said to them, Go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. All over the world. God created everything we're supposed to preach all over the world. And the word gospel means good news. And as Christians, we are called to share the good news of the gospel, like we just saw in Mark 16, 15. Go up there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you get and, and I mean this is a simple question. What gives you peace? Good news or bad news? Somebody tells you bad news, I'm not going to put you much in peace. So spread the good news of the gospel. It's peaceful. Jesus gave us that. Um, John 16, 33, he says, I have told you these things so that in me that you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Uh, there's a song called Take Heart by Hillsong. We're going to do that next year, Randy. It's an awesome song. Look it up. It's an awesome song. Well, Mark tells us that the sacrifice Jesus made for us so we can be saved and have peace through him. Jesus died on the cross for us. Three days later, he overcame the world. He overcame death. He overcame the devil, the enemy, and everything that, that is evil. Just like he said he would. So that we can have peace through him. The Sermon on the Mount, uh, Steve did a, a great series on that a couple of months ago. In Matthew 5, 9, the Sermon on the Mount, it says, Blessed are the peacemakers they will be called the children of God. So it kind of gives you like, hey, awesome, if I'm a peacemaker, I can be a child of God, right? You know, kind of, no, um, sort of, you know, we'll get to it. You'll see how it works. So if you look at John, so if you look at John 1.12, it says, but all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Now the term children of God is another way of saying we have a very special relationship with our Father God. Um, it's something that we all strive for. It's something that we want to spread. It's part of the gospel that we're spreading to show other people can have that relationship. And once the people are going to ask you, how do I get that relationship? And, it, and the Bible's pretty specific on how to do that. Um, when we believe and put our faith in the Son, Jesus, we become children of God. John 1, 12, but all who did receive him. Receive, somebody's going to say, receive who? Receive Jesus. Uh, who believe in his name, and he gave the right to become children of God. It's easy. You know, some people, I think, make, you know, Jesus, they're scared of it. But it's not, it's nothing to be scared of. It's an easy process. Just receive him and believe in your heart. Some might ask, how do we receive him? Romans tells us exactly how. Romans 10, 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? No, kind of, sort of. Kind of well, yeah, it is actually. No, really, you know, keep in mind, you can't just say the words and pretend to believe. It's not like that easy. It's like, yeah, okay, I believe, let's get a pizza and watch a movie. No, it doesn't work like that. Um, Romans 10.10. 10. This is the important part. This is the not easy. Well, it's easy. It's still easy. For it is with your heart that you believe. Like I said, you can't just say, all right, yeah, Jesus, you rock, man, cool, I'm saved. Let's go to the game. God knows your heart. Jesus knows your heart. He knows if you just give a lip service and don't really mean it. You know, tell him you messed up. Tell him you made mistakes. Ask him to help you. Believe that Jesus died for you and was raised to bring peace and save you from many things, mostly save you from yourself while we're here. And it would save me from myself in a big way, you know. <laughs> <We've done. laughs> Once you've done that, you've been adopted by God. You are now a child because he loves you. He loved you enough to create the wonderful you, and he loves you so much that he wants to adopt you to be not just his creation, but his child. A lot of people will say, we're all children of God, and we're all creations of God. But until you're adopted by God, you're not his child yet. I know that sounds kind of harsh, but it's not my rules. But it's true. Um, John, uh, John, 3, uh, John 3, 1 says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. 
it is, it, it's his love that's given us the opportunity to live as his children and act like his children. Now, think, I would think about this for a minute. Do your kids act like you? <laughs> well, that was... <laughs> My kids act like me. <laughs> and, 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 and if you don't have kids yet, then I'm going to ask kids, do you act like your parents? All right, and some kids will be like me when I was a teenager. No, I don't act like my dad. News flash, kids, you act like your folks. <laughs> yeah, you act like your folks. I used to just, I, my mom used to say, when you are your father's son. Looking back, that's an incredible compliment. But back then, I'm like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Oh, yeah, you are. She said I had a very good talent for pushing my dad right to the line of beating and then backing off. <laughs> so, um, why do we do that? Why did I act like my dad? Because I'm his kid. My kids, I mean, I mean all four of them. John, I became John, he became my son when, when I married Tracy. He would have been my son earlier, but she didn't give me your number. I blame that on her. Uh, <laughs> uh, I picked Jonathan up from this, oh, I didn't ask you if I could use you as an example, so. <laughs> Don't worry, because the others are on it too. I picked him up from a school dance one night, and you know, I said, "Yeah, fun." He's like, "Yeah," and I said, "You know, I, 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 uh, I opened the door for my girl, uh, let her sit down first, I held her shoes while she danced, um, you know." And, and he said, "The stuff like I see you do for, your, for my mom." Uh, I don't hold Tracy's shoes because I don't like feet, but I do open the door for her. And he said he just tried to treat her special like I treat Tracy. So he's not doing that. So I go, "Hey, all right, cool. You're my son now." Um, Ty. Ty is the same thing. Ty, Tracy keeps saying, oh, he's your son. Um, Ty has got a bit of obsessive compulsive disorder like me. Um, he has a certain way to do things when he sets his mind on something, he's focused on it. He's got the same warped sense of humor as I do. And we get into these conversations, and I'll look over and Tracy will just be like, I'm, I'm going to be on the road. No. She's like, oh, yeah. He's your boy. Trent, Trent's the same way. Trent is very organized. Um, oh, I was going to have a picture. I have a picture of Trent when he was a little kid. We're decorating Easter eggs and with the markers, and he's got, his, well, they're all lined up. You take one, you take the cap off, and you color his egg, and you put the cap back on, and take a break. So he's, and that's how I am. Everything's got its place. The picture next to him is a tie with markers all over the place, including his face. Um, <laughs> But Trent has, he's just, there's certain things that he likes to do, and he's got a way to do it, and he's like me, and he imitates me. Um, my youngest, Hunter, whenever we're together, he likes to point out, oh yeah, Dad, I like that too. Oh yeah, I like that same food too. Can we do this? Because, you know, we both like it. He's got a thing for music, and if you don't know, by now, I've got a thing for music just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Um, but they are all not purposely imitating me. They see what I do, and it's just natural. Um, and they don't do it, like I said, they don't do it, so I'll go, hey, awesome, here's your gold star, you are now my son. Um, they do it because, again, they're my children, like we are children of God. And our actions should be showing others that. Philippians 2.15 says we are to live as children of God. And as is made, I did that on purpose. It's made pop because it's an action word here. And this, this, and I'm going to get back to that. But and, and it'll bring it right into Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself up as a fragrant, a frag, a fragrant offering to sacrifice as sacrifice to God. So it doesn't say not like Christ. It doesn't say like Him. It's not like Christ kind of did for us or tried to do for us, or thought about doing. It says, as he did for us. He did this. So it wasn't a passing thought in his mind, oh, I'll get to it later, whatever. He did it. As, a little word, but means a lot in this context. As is referring to the character of Jesus Christ and how he actually acted as an example for us and what he did for us. So be imitators of God. Act as you love children, not wondering if you are, or maybe you'll try it. Or I'll think about imitating him. As his children imitate him. Now, last time I had this uh, a verse out of this book, I couldn't pronounce his word, so just give me a second. Second Thessalonians. Oh, it worked. 316. Now may the Lord of peace 
yourself, give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord will be with all of you. The Lord of peace. He knows what peace is. He created it. <coughs> no question about it. So, the, so God is the God of peace. Not a God of peace. Not one of the gods of peace. The one. He is the God of peace. Absolute God of peace. Um, and he gave us his son, the Prince of Peace. He sent us not just a peacemaker, but the peacemaker and his son, as himself, who gives us peace according to God's words and leaves his peace with us. And because we can clearly see from Scripture, we are children of God, and we know how to become his children, and that children and, and the children naturally act like their parents, and it just follows to be that we are peacemakers like our father. Yep, awesome story, Scott. How to become a peacemaker. <laughs> Glad you asked, Church. Well, you guys got a lot of questions today. <laughs> uh, it can start with something simple, you know, with, with people that even you don't know. Remember the greetings? Hi, hello, good morning, good afternoon, evening, good night, shalom, hola, konnichiwa, good day. What's up? Asalam, I like him. I probably destroyed that. Dude, greetings, all greetings. And I pretty much call everybody dude. Um, at least a bartender, I couldn't remember your name. I remember what you drank, you were a dude. Doesn't matter. Thank you for coming up be like, what's up, dude? Tracy, what's up, dude? You drank if you're waiting right there for it. But greetings, we come back to that. Start with a greeting. Every day we get up and we greet our kids, we greet our wives. Um, I greet Tracy when I get home because I wake up at four and if I greet her at that time in the morning, she'd kill me. Um, <laughs> but we greet, you know, we come here to church, we greet each other, we all know each other. We need to start greeting strangers. People that we just randomly run into in drive throughs and stuff. You know, people that, and people that may not like us. Um, I know what you're thinking, but who doesn't like you, Scott? There are people out there. Uh, Matthew 5.47, the NLT says, if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pay me to that. The NLT translation puts it like this, if you are kind to only your friends, how are you different than anyone else? What makes us different than the rest of our world if we are just, if I'm only talking to my family and you guys here on Sunday, and the people that I know and that I like, I love all you guys, I'll talk to you all day. I, no, I won't, don't worry. <clears throat> but how are we different from the rest of the world who only brings the cliques that they talk to and that they hang out with? It says even pagans do that. We see strangers every day, and we don't have to invite them in and have dinner and all that. But we can simply say hi. Make eye contact. Hey, what's going on? You'd be surprised at that for some people. People in drive throughs when you're going through Dunkin' Donuts or Burger King, hey, how you doing? What's going on? You okay? Good. Thank you for the food. You can even give them an invite card. You know, but don't be. A lot of people are like, all right, yeah, thanks. And they just drive off. I was, hey, what's going on, man? Tracy keeps telling me you can talk to anybody. Pretty much. Um, delivery people dropping off your pizza. On Wednesday nights, um, James sometimes James' family has some food delivered. Every every single Wednesday that they show up, James, hey man, come on in, come on in. You know, we're rehearsing. Hey, let me give you a church card. Yeah, what are you doing? Where do you go to church? You know, he greets them. Smile, we're all smiling. What's going on? They probably think we're a bunch of lunatics. <laughs> you can see us in the garage, you think so too. Uh, even in, uh, like, if you're in the aisle of Walmart doing shopping or Publix or whatever, if somebody looks at you, you know, don't, I, hey, simple. they're having a bad day. A simple smile and eye contact might just, oh, that was cool. You know? Um, you know, anything, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, it's a smile and eye contact. A simple thing, but it could help a person have a good day and be nice to others. And get others to do more of the same. And before you know, we have a bunch of smiling people instead of a bunch of growling people. <coughs> Wait, hi, how are you? You don't have to walk through the store going, hi, how are you? Hi, 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 how are you? Beard of Jesus? Beard? You know, everybody you know. If you're walking through the mall, my head would explode and Tracy would get mad and she'd have to clean it up. Um, but those little things of hi, how are you? It might just start a conversation with somebody, you know? And it might start leading into the good news leading into the good news of the gospel and helping somebody find peace. You never know how God will work in you for somebody else to have peace. Um, I, I, I would advise not starting conversations like, 
Um, hey, you need Jesus. Uh, confess and tell her you're born in hell. Don't, don't. Uh, be saved or be microwaved. That's not another one to start a conversation with. Confess your story, you won't see the glory. Uh, burn away or burn away. Those are some of the ones I've heard of the past. You say, don't, don't use those. So, um, don't tell an Eskimo that hell is hot. So I heard a, a, a priest actually when I was in high school said that. And it made sense. But you can, I mean, if you're talking to somebody just in general, you can tell if they're not having a bad day or if they're in a bad mood. Sometimes they're obvious and you can ask. Them. Some of them will want to talk to you. Some of them, you know, it might help to talk to a stranger because they're getting outside opinion. And unbiased, if you don't know them, you don't know the situation, you can say, I'll, I'll pray for you. Some people say, no, no, no. Why? Why would you pray? You can't hurt. You know, it's okay, no problem. Just don't pray for them, they don't know. Uh, you know, don't push it. You know, but, uh, but pray for them. At the very least, they'll plant a seed that God can grow and let them know somebody does care. Because that's all they need to know is that somebody does care. And they start wondering why you care. It might bring up, why do you care so much about people? Because Jesus does. Because Jesus cares about me. So how about, you know, how about the people that are just miserable? And keep on growling, and the ones who just plain don't like people, or just don't like me. Keep acting like Jesus. Keep being imitators of God. Pray for them every day. Um, Matthew 5, 4, 44 says, I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And I get it. Some people just don't want anything to do with others. Some don't. They just... And some are dangerous. You know, don't go run into a, a, a gang fight trying to spread peace. That's not um, they fake eye contact sometimes as a threat. Just keep walking, okay? Keep walking. Pray away. Thanks. Um, to make up an attitude, just keep on walking. You did your part. You extended it. Romans twelve eighteen. Paul says, "If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone." In this world, it's not always possible. But there's no excuse not to try. <laughs> you shared some peace. Some people will wonder and find your friendliness to mean you want something from them. Again, as far as it depends on you. you know, no, there's no reason not to try. Uh, I think I talked too fast. I'm already kind of my closing with my closing one. So I would like to kind of start the closing with. with uh, this guy Scott that I used to work with, he, he's awesome. I have so much stuff written about him, but I, I, and like I was praying about this morning, and I think I just need to tell you a little bit about this guy. But the first thing I want to tell you is that Scott is awesome. And you can ask Tracy, when I first came home, Scott wasn't awesome. Um, he's a contractor for, I work for the city doing irrigation, and he works for a, con a contracting company that we use called Nature's Keepers, an awesome company. Um, Scott was very cantankerous. Uh, my supervisor told me about him. He's like, man, he's just an angry dude. I'm like, that's right, I'll get along with him. I've worked with angry people before. I'll get along with him. You don't know him, man. He doesn't like politics. He argues about that. He doesn't like Christians. He argues about that. That's okay. I'll get along with him. Um, if you get a chance, ask Tracy about Vince, another guy I used to work with. But Scott, I, the first time I met him, he was talking to my supervisor. I walked up and my supervisor ever said, Scott, this is Scott. And he was yelling about politics and the way the world was. And he looked at me and he goes, yeah, so you just gonna pray about it and hope it gets better? I was like, okay. That was the first impression. I was like, well, I can't hurt. But there, there was something about him. I don't know what it was, but there was something about him. I knew he was a good guy. Now, we used to, we argued a lot. Um, he was very, as far as teaching me things, I was new to irrigation. He didn't like that because I didn't know what I was doing. And when I'd ask him something, be like, you know, why, why does the valve do that? Well, because it does. Okay. Why do you hook the wires like that? Because I just trust me. You know, like, I'm a very, I want to know why things work. Tell me how it works and why it works. I can understand it better. Um, I'd be digging a hole. If you're digging it wrong, give it a shovel. All right, so I, 
I started praying for him, and I came home and I told Tracy about this guy. I'm like, I don't know what to do. She said, pray for him. And I did. And every day I saw him. I was like, hey, what's up, dude? What's happening? Nothing. Nothing. After a couple months, we started getting along a little bit. And he was still like, I was that new guy. You know, it was just aggravating him and frustrating because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I actually, 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 after about six months, I looked at my boss and said, I, I can't work with this guy, man. We just, we keep slamming heads. Uh, my supervisor retired, so I was, Scott and I worked together almost every single day. And we started, I just kept praying for him and praying for him. I was nice to him, I was nice to him. Um, if I go to the store, bring him a Gatorade. And he was nice, thank you. We started softening up a little bit. Um, we were asked to write a paper. There was some complaints about him with the company. We were asked to write a paper of stuff that he does. Uh, we have, and I don't mean to go on about Scott, this is it's a very important, it's important to me and I feel like I, I should explain this. So we have a water management company, and this company used to be in Scott's head, and I don't know why, but it used to just put him in a bad mood every day. Like, Dude, stop letting them live in your head, man. He's like, oh, they do this and they do that. So we were asked to write a paper, uh, to, to write down some things that, that we had problems with Scott for, which I didn't really think doing. And so my boss said, you gotta do all right. So I wrote Scott's an awesome worker. He was a very hard worker, one of the best work I've ever seen. He would work, the job had to be done right, and it had to be done right the first time. If something got messed up, he'd pull it apart and make sure it was put back right. That's all, that's, and that's awesome, I love that. Um, just watching him, I learned so much. Uh, so I put, you know, he's got, he, he's got a great work ethic, he's a hard worker, he's always on time, he never leaves early. Um, but I did put, he seems to let this one company live in his head. And it upsets him most of the day. And in turn, if you work with somebody that's upset all day, you get upset. Now, these papers were anonymous, and I was asked not to say anything. A couple of days ago, a couple of days went by, and uh, Stuart, his boss, sat down with him and talked about these papers. And Scott came to me and he asked me about them. And I said, Yeah, I was asked to fill out one. And he said, Can I ask what you're doing? I said, Yeah, I'll be honest with you, because he knew I wouldn't lie to him. I, did, I never did. And I told him what I wrote. And he said, I knew that was your paper. He said, one, you didn't say anything mean, and two, I can see the preacher in you about the thing in my head, man. <laughs> so, for, <laughs> so, yeah, really, yeah. I, yeah, I took that as a compliment, but from, for some reason, from that point on, we started talking. Mm -hmm. And like we found out, we have very similar pasts. We have the same warped sense of humor. TV shows, like it was a daily thing with us. We would sit, we would talk, and we would laugh until tears were coming out of our eyes about some of the TV shows that we watched. He'd come in one week, dude, have you seen this show? I'm like, no, you gotta watch it. I come in, all right, you gotta see this show, man, it's awesome. Well, we got to the point where I felt like we were friends, and it was really cool. Then he started going, look, man, I gotta show you, this is how this works. All right, do, do it this way. You get in here and you do this, right? And I'm gonna show you. And it was, it was great, man, it was really cool. I'm getting chills, because I'm just um, he was just, I, I don't know what happened. Um, well, God happened, because I kept praying for him. And I kept, he, he did not, he did not, he's like, don't play the Christian music when we're working. I'm like, okay, so I played All My Brothers or something. We did have similar taste of music, too. Um, one day we got, into a, we got into a huge fight, and it was over something really stupid. And we we're down by the Crosstown Bridge, and the two of us are in the field. <laughs> And I hopped in my gator bucket. If you don't know what a gator is, it's like a golf cart, a diesel powered golf cart. It's got a top speed of 24, and it goes zero to 10 in 18 minutes. So <laughs> I, I was so mad, I hopped in my golf cart. And you know when you get mad at somebody and you get in your car and you slam it, drive away real fast, I got in that golf cart, and I hit that thing, I was like, yeah. <laughs> you know? So I got back to my truck. He came to the truck about 10 minutes later, and, and I calmed down. I'm like, look, Scott, I'm sorry, man. I shouldn't have yelled at you like that. That's, I don't like to do that. And my, my predecessor told me once, he said, I've worked for Scott for seven years. I've never seen him apologize to anybody. Scott looked at me, and he said, no, dude, that was my fault. I shouldn't have yelled at you. I'm sorry. I was like, wow, cool, all right. And then the rest of the day, we were just laughing. The rest of the, I don't think we worked anymore during that day. Um, we were just laughing about everything. Sure, <laughs> tax dollars going hard to work. Uh, so, his boss, Stuart, 
Uh, he's a pastor, very strong Christian. Stewards, I wish he was here. He's larger than light. He is awesome. He used to talk to Scott a lot about Jesus, and I brought it up a few times. I invited him to church. He's like, nah. Um, Scott came to me once. I thought this was. He came to me once and he told me his mother died. And he didn't know what to do. Uh, you don't do that to somebody you don't like anymore. Mm -hmm. Much as they pretend not to like you. And I said, well, dude, go home. He said, no, my family's there. I haven't talked to my sister in years. It doesn't matter, man. She'll know you're there. And he came to me for advice. And I was like, wow, I took that one. So he went home that day. Um, I guess a couple months later. And I won't forget this day. He called me and told me he had stage four cancer. Mm -hmm. All in his abdomen. And I told him, I said, excuse me, you might want to start talking to Jesus. He's healed, he's, he's done bigger miracles and, and healed harder things. You know? And he kind of chuckled and changed the subject. So uh, I was talking to Stuart. Two of us were praying for a miracle. You know, you guys have seen miracles, you know God heals. And we were praying for a miracle heart. Um, I think probably six to eight weeks later, I was at his funeral, mm -hmm. and uh, this got me at the funeral too. I was talking to his wife, and she said he did. He accepted Jesus. Oh, wow. I thought, wow, <laughs> I got my miracle. Mm -hmm. Amen. Excuse me, sorry. I still talk to Scott when I'm doing irrigation. I look at him like, yeah, I know I messed that up. Shut up. <laughs> uh, Scott, right? Scott is proof right there that if we are children of God and we act like our Father, if we live as imitators of God and His beloved children, we pray for our enemies those who persecute us, if we would be different from the pagans, and not just greet our friends, if we do what Jesus has entrusted us to do and spread the good news, the gospels, then maybe, maybe we can start to trickle out of peace. We'll start spreading over people. We'll start spreading over cities, states, the country, and the world. If you think about it like this, I said earlier, you know, the, the dripping faucet, you get a, a hose bib or spigot outside on, on a patio, just say, and it just drips a little bit. Those drips then just splatter up. If it keeps dripping, it'll splatter more. If it keeps dripping, it splatters. It starts gathering, it starts puddling and spreading out. If we do that, if we're the faucet of Jesus, and we start trickling out, instead of it coming down from the government, we trickle out, spreading over the hate and over the unrest, and over the violence, and over the, the, the non-peace stuff that's going around. And it doesn't matter what government they're in. It doesn't matter if they're LGBTQ, trans, wh wh whatever they, it doesn't matter. We spread peace to them. It doesn't matter if they're angry all the time. We can calm them down. We can help them find some peace. I saw it happen. But the trickling down will hit and splatter out a little until the water starts to puddle, like I said. The more trickling, the more spreading out. The bigger the space that covers the surface, the patio gets more covered, the world gets more covered. If we can be the peacemakers Jesus wanted us and start trickling the Gospels out of peace from our living water, <coughs> Jesus Christ, our peace trickles will splash out and spread out a bit, like the water on the patio, and eventually the water on the patio, the peace will start covering the surface and more and more trickles out, like the water on the patio, the trickling peace will rise and rise spread and spread. Maybe people will see the peace in us through, our, through the sacrifice of our king and realize they can have peace as well. Second, Second Thessalonians. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times. In every way, the Lord be with all of you. We are peacemakers. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for today. Let's start there. Thank you for today. Bringing us all together. 
I pray, God, that your words, that your words, not mine, that your words would touch hearts. That your words would show the peace of Jesus Christ in all of our hearts. That we would feel it trickling down from you, from our living water, that our King, our Savior Jesus. And that we would spread that water, that we would spread that peace, that it would trickle out, that we would help people find peace. We can do that with you, God. We can only do that with you. I pray that people see how to get that peace. I pray that hearts are touched by you, Father. I, I pray that people who don't know you, that don't know Jesus, that are not your children, yet will come to you. Like the Bible says it's pretty easy. Confess with your mouth, just tell them, Jesus, I need help. I messed up. Please help me. Save my soul, live in my heart, be my Lord and Savior. I know you died for me. The King of the universe died for us. Please live in my heart. Make me one of your children and help me spread your peace. God, I pray for everyone here that they would always find peace in you. That they would be with you and feel your presence, your comfort, your love, your protection, your correction, your healing, and your peace. Thank you, Jesus, in your name.